Hi, welcome back to our class with Miss Teresa. So today we're going to be doing uh, art on the solar eclipse and a lunar eclipse. And might as well just get started. Okay, so I made two circles and I colored one completely black. And I actually put tape all over this so that the uh, ink and the color pencil didn't get all over my hands for later use. And so if um, you have tape at home, like scotch tape, you could always um, layer your drawings with that so that they stay nice and pristine. And then I did the same thing here. And what we're going to start with is uh, we're gonna go over the phases of the moon again real quick. So we live in the Northern Hemisphere and for an eclipse to happen, we need a full moon. So we have the new moon, a waxing crescent, a first quarter waxing gibbous, full moon, waning gibbous, third quarter, and waiting crescent. And in the southern hemisphere, it goes um, the other direction. So there was a fun word that I saw in my research, which is alignment. So when things align, see, they're not in complete alignment, but if you put them it looks like it's from point A to point B. That's what alignment means, that it's a straight line. So you have the sun, the earth, and the moon. And depending on where the earth and the moon are, you're either gonna have a uh, lunar eclipse or a solar eclipse. And so we're going to start with a circle. And Miss Teresa forgot to bring my uh, plastic pattern with me today, so we're going to use my protected piece of art here. So I'm gonna trace a circle, and if you wanna start with a pencil and then go over it with pen, that's okay, or if you want to uh, use marker, that's also okay. Just don't put it on a bowl or a plate or a cup, because it's kinda hard to get off. Okay. And it's okay if it's a little bumpy because there's a lot of craters happening on the moon surface. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make circles to represent craters. And I'm going to be drawing a little bit on the fast side. And if you need to take your time, go right ahead these videos are also available on YouTube. And there's a lot more impact craters on the moon than on Earth because we have our atmosphere to protect us. Okay. Another thing, Miss Teresa, that, uh, you know, the, the vegetation on Earth disguises the fact that we have craters, right? It totally does. Yeah. And um, uh, we talked about the lack of erosion happening on the moon because, um, because that's something that happens here on Earth. And so we have vegetation and we also have like the, the land will change and dissipate. And so you won't be able to see it as clearly as you would from here. And the, the fact that mm -hmm. there isn't the same kind of atmosphere on um, the moon so that when an object comes and hits it, it's gonna leave an impact. And so they might be tiny, they might be larger, and we're pretty lucky to have the atmosphere that we do that keeps the space radiation from harming us too much. But if like you spend um, a day outside in the summer and you don't have any sunscreen on, by the end of the day, you're gonna be pretty pink. And so that is um, space radiation um, going through the layers of our atmosphere. And one of these days we'll have to do um, another video on just kind of our wonderful uh, atmosphere and the different levels. That'd but be 
Yeah. Be fun, yeah. Okay, so I am going to make our moon a little bit on the gray side. And so I don't have a gray crayon, but I do have a black one. So what I'm going to do is lightly color because although the moon looks bright, it's pretty gray in color when you get up close and personal. I've and never been there myself, so <laughs> I couldn't tell you. <laughs> Actually, I think that it would be a fun place to visit, but not necessarily to live. Mm -hmm. I like being able to breathe fresh air and feeling the uh, ocean waves and uh, the earth is a pretty neat place to stay put. But the moon is also made up of a lot of the same material that earth is. So that tells me that a long time ago, they were one formation. And then a part of it broke off and spun around for a very long time. And that's how you ended up with two spheres. Okay. And So I like um, children's books because a lot of them will have like their characters sitting on the moon or traveling to the moon. Um, but you wouldn't be able to do it in a tank top and pair of shorts and flip flops. You would have to do it in a special spacesuit. Uh, and there are a ton of amazing videos um, about what it's like to be an astronaut. And you can find those on YouTube. You can find them through NASA. And I think I needed to correct myself that uh, I thought it was NASA.org, but I think it's NASA.gov, G-O-V. So, so sometimes they get one domain, but they don't collect them all. So they'll have a similar name. All right. So here is my moon. And you might see what Miss Teresa did. So I decided instead of sharpening um, my pencils a little bit of a time, I sharpened both sides so that if I wore one side down that I could just go ahead and use the other side. And then as they wear down, I'll meet them somewhere in the middle. But that's what I do with my art supplies. Okay, so I want to, this was a really fun project for me. Um, there was so much information that I wanted to just kind of compress it all, but um, you could do your own research on some of the words and uh, things that you learned from this video. So it says for a lunar eclipse, eclipses have to happen during a full moon. So if the moon looks like this, so if, if this is what the night sky looks like, um, you're not going to, it's not gonna be in alignment so you're not going to uh, see what a lunar eclipse looks like. And the lunar eclipse will go from bright white and gray to these beautiful hues of yellow, red, and orange. And we're going to do a kind of a visual experiment in a few minutes. But this is kind of what it looks like. Can we zoom up on this one right here? Well, actually this is a solar eclipse, but but uh, the lunar eclipse, actually, we'll go ahead and do that. So Miss Teresa has this. Oh, I know it's super heavy. OK, so this is a vase that usually sits in my office, but I'm going to borrow it to show you an experiment. OK, so this is what the moon normally looks like. But during a lunar eclipse, and it could be about 15 minutes, this entire process, or um, actually I'm gonna have to fact check that one to see if it wasn't the solar eclipse that it takes that long. But what happens is that the moon will change colors and then it'll go back to what it's regularly. And it could also look like it's increasing in size 
and it's called a supermoon. And the moon isn't changing size. It's just changing um, how close it is to us. And so it's our perspective of sometimes you see the moon and it looks really tiny and sometimes it looks giant and it might seem magical. And um, that's the magic of science. So we're gonna do that one more time. But normal moon. And then we're gonna color it, these beautiful colors. And that is certain colors in the sun's rays that are, oops, ah art supplies everywhere that are um, reflecting off the surface and so it's it's like it's breaking up the colors of the sun so once you are done with this go ahead and get some red some yellow and some orange out and then color your normal gray and white moon a beautiful red, yellow, and orange color. It's kind of like if you combine sunset and sunrise all together, you get this really unique experience. And um, it is safe to look at a lunar eclipse, but it is not safe to look at a solar eclipse without special glasses. So sunglasses really don't cut it. Um, you need to get a special pair. And if you know that it's coming, it's something that you can order. But um, unfortunately, if you look directly into a solar eclipse, it can mess up a part of your eye. And I think that the uh, TV teachers did an episode on the eye, didn't they? So if you were to look directly into the sun, it's going to leave a permanent mark on your eyes and it can mess up your vision. So it's not something that you want to risk doing, looking directly at it. And so, but like, Miss Teresa has experienced looking at a solar eclipse with special glasses and it's super, super neat. And if that's something that you wanna see, there's lots of videos on that too, so that you can see it safely. Have you ever seen that, Mr. Kevin? Yes, just a couple of years ago. Yeah. We witnessed the eclipse uh, from the uh, playground at Whittier, uh, Wainwright, rather. That's really cool. Yeah. I really like um, sunset and sunrise because the sky goes from super dark to these beautiful rainbow colors, and then it does it in reverse. And then, So I'm gonna put some orange in here. So, so when you have the night sky, you can put stars like we did before where they're like little dots. And this would be one of those um, watercolor projects that might be kind of cool to do. So if you layer color pencils and pen and then use watercolor over it, it gives this really cool effect. And if you don't want to use up your um, supplies, like your markers or your pens, or uh, you could always use the black paint and that would cover a lot more surface than doing this. So I'm making really loose lines And it's taken some practice not to color over my, my objects. But this tells me that the sky isn't white. But I also looked up to see, are there any other colors that the moon can be instead of the red, yellow, orange? And the answer is yes. Okay. 
So I know this is super dark, um, but the image wasn't colored, but this was the information that I wanted. And so you have your regular moon, which is kind of a white gray. And then it says um, value of zero. It says very dark eclipse, moon almost invisible. So it's almost completely black. And then you have value one, dark eclipse, moon turns gray or brown. And I can't say that I've ever really noticed that a moon was brown. Value number two, rust colored, oops. Oh, here we go. Um, value number two is rust colored. So it's kind of a red, a dark center with lighter rim. Value number three is brick red color, may have yellow rim, and that's the one that I just colored. And then uh, value number four, which is a copper orange color, may have light blue rim. And so it's just depending on um, location and how, it's, how the alignment is and what part of the world and what uh, season it is. They're rare, but they're not super rare. So um, scientists do track these type of things. And so the information's out there. And if your country, state, city is lucky enough to be um, able to see it, then that's, that's pretty special. Alrighty. So here is my lunar eclipse. Mr. Kevin, did you know that they came in all those colors? You know, I've, I've seen a few different, different colored moons before, but I didn't know that there were that many. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing, but this time we're going to do a solar eclipse. Okay, Miss Teresa, remind me, a solar eclipse means that the moon is in front of the sun? Yeah, let me, let me, uh... <laughs> it's hard to keep these facts in your head. It really is. And so it's always good to write notes to yourself. It says, traditionally, eclipses are divided into two major types, solar and lunar. So solar means sun and lunar means moon. Mm -hmm. So solar e eclipse occurs when the moon passes between Earth and the sun, leaving the moving region of shadow on the Earth's surface. Lunar eclipses occur when the Earth passes between the sun and the moon, casting a shadow on the moon. So mm. those are the difference. Thank you. You're welcome. And then uh, here is a diagram. Let me see if I can zoom in a little. So this is the sun. Mm -hmm. And this is the moon. Yeah. And this is us. So when it passes between. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm very much a visual learner. And so I like things like charts and diagrams and it helps. Okay. And then here we have the sun and the earth and then the moon is over here. So I, I hope that clarified. Mm -hmm. And I have a bigger one right here. So we have the sun, the earth, and the moon, moon, and this is the total lunar eclipse. Okay, so one of my drawings while I was preparing for this kind of looks like that. Wow. And the reason why it looks like it's on fire on the outer rim is, well, the sun is a giant fireball in the sky. And so um, when the moon goes to cover it, you can see the um, activity that's happening on the moon. And so some of it's going to be short and some of the light is going to be really long and uh, flowy. It, and it's actually quite beautiful. But the fact that we can draw it and see it is pretty amazing. Um, it's, a, and it, it's an exciting time to be alive. Um, things that you could only see with the naked eye 
um, before, now we have tools and telescopes and we have scientists on the space station um, that are studying space phenomenon and educating people here back on Earth. And I think that it's pretty awesome. Okay, so cool. I do not want to use an entire Sharpie or a pen on coloring this. And so what I'm going to do is actually combine my color pencil and my marker. So I'm going to make close set lines and then I'm going to color in the spaces. Okay. So I will go back to coloring the inner of this moon, but I want to make kind of a yellow ring around it. I noticed that you're using kind of the side of the pen of the pencil. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and that's because I don't want my pencil to break. And so mm -hmm. if you put too much pressure right on the tip, mm -hmm. it's more likely to snap in half. Yeah. And so I'm trying to use the side of it. That's a cool technique. It gives you a wider line too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I find it very relaxing to color whether it's out of a coloring book or it's a drawing that I've made, I find it to be a, a very peaceful activity mm -hmm. to do. And so I'm going to make them different lengths. So it almost looks like hair. Okay, and then got some orange going on. And I've always been curious on, well, what does it look like from space when this happens? And um, it might look like a big black dot on <laughs> a part of the world. <laughs> but again, it's about perspective. And what we can see from Earth is the night sky. And during a solar eclipse, it will go from daylight to darkness. And um, it can seem kind of scary if you don't really know what's going on. I think it would be pretty odd if I expected it to be bright and sunny at two o'clock in the afternoon, and then all of a sudden it became nighttime. <laughs> but, okay, so we got some red. And so we also have um, the different bands of color. And it really does kind of look like a ring of fire. Yeah, I was just thinking the same thing. Ring of fire. That's cool. And you can use whatever you want. You can use marker. You can use uh, color pencils or crayons or watercolors. Or if you want to go ahead and mix them all, feel free to do that. I'm using um, the last of my construction paper. And so it's kind of a thicker material. And... So remember, this part isn't going to be blue anymore because it's going to be during the eclipse, the solar eclipse, where the moon is in the way. And it doesn't happen all that often. And you may ask also, why does it not happen every single full moon, right? Or at least that was a question that I came up with. And the reason is, is that the alignment doesn't happen um, that way every uh, lunar cycle because I think it's like a 5% uh, axis on it. So, so it, if it doesn't line up perfectly, then you can't see this phenomenon. But if it's a little bit off, then it's not going to be that special time for it to happen. So it happens a couple times a year instead of, um, instead of happening every 28 days. Hmm. or something along those lines. But I've definitely noticed like sometimes the moon seems a lot smaller and sometimes the moon seems huge. Okay. 
So what Miss Teresa is going to end up doing is because I'm rubbing my hand against uh, the colors that it's causing this part to become nice and gray. Um, I'm going to end up using a baby wipe to take it off. But that gets most art supplies off. Oh, here's a nice little factoid. If uh, you use Sharpie marker and you get it on your skin and you can put dry erase marker on your skin and then use soap and it'll take the Sharpie marker off. All right. So what I'm gonna do is that light color again and see I've pretty much flattened that part of my pencil, but since I had already sharpened the other side, I can just switch it. Do you have any other questions, Mr. Kevin, about the solar or lunar eclipse? No, I'm just watching you color and it's very relaxing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I rather enjoy doing this. People do this for a living, don't they? They really do. There's, um, but they use a lot of different tools. And so there's things like the Whatcom tablet. Um, you can use paints or acrylics. You can use pen, you can use pencil. Um, there's a lot of jobs for artists. And so, but I think that everybody should uh, learn how to color and draw on normal pieces of paper. I think that that's a great way to start. When I was a kid, uh, any kind of special holiday or birthday, I always asked for art supplies. And both of my kids draw. And I believe that everybody has the ability to become an artist. And things aren't always easy at first, but you got to practice. And it's just like doing math or science or anything else. It's take your time, enjoy the process. And if you can, send the art to us. All right, so here is my solar eclipse. Remember, do not look directly into the sun. It's kind of dangerous. It'll ruin your eyeballs. Uh, sunglasses aren't quite enough for uh, the production. You can get special glasses that will let you see the process. And if um, you're not in a place where you can see the process, then uh, you can find lots and lots of videos about it online. And then I keep showing this uh, bottom piece by accident, but uh, Miss Teresa started drawing um, a food photo, a food picture, and then um, it was something that I was gonna go back to. <laughs> it looks like a bowl of rice. It is a bowl of rice. <laughs> so here, And it's all about perspective. The moon is the same moon, and the night sky is the same night sky, and the sun is the same sun, but it looks completely different at different times when it's doing different things. Mm -hmm. so, Very nice. Yeah. But I really enjoyed doing this project, and I will put it in my special box of things that I would love to teach again. So if you have the ability to send in your artwork. You can send it to us and Mr. Kevin will uh, put that in at the end. Mm -hmm. And I really enjoyed this time together. We'll see you next time. Bye. Welcome to the second grade performance of No Monkeys, No Chocolate. This is a reader's theater performed on April 23rd, 2021. Proudly presented by Franklin's second grade classes. Chocolate chip cookies. Ice cream chocolate. Moist fudgy brownies. 
What makes all those desserts so delicious? Chocolate, of course. But you can't make chocolate without... Us! We're Cocoa Bee! We're the seed of the Cocoa Tree. That's right. We live in the tropical rainforest of Central and South America. You might be wondering how we turn into chocolate. Good question. First, workers spread us out in the sun. Then they roast us in a giant oven. Ha, ha, ha. Next machine mushes us into Ma a, mashes us into a thick place. They, they squeeze, squeeze out the liquid, liquid and, and we are at least the boss from us becomes mm. cocoa, cocoa powder. Then we get mixed with milk, sugar, and all kinds of other yummy ingredients. Then they make us taste even more delicious. Hooray! So down, you beans. That's not the whole story, and you know it. We couldn't make chocolate without... Telling me then it pollinates the second flower? Bingo! You're pretty smart for a human! Wow, but that's not the whole story. Cocoa flowers couldn't bloom without. Us, we're cocoa leaves. We soak energy up from the sun and use it to make. Sugary food for the whole tree. Uh-oh! Here come the leaf cutter ants! No, no problem. We've got friends in all the right places. Wait, hey, us, we're we are the ones. We lay eggs on top of the ants. When the ants hatch, tiny magic turtle out. They're hungry. They need food. So we burrow into, into the ants' heads. heads. Then we eat their brains. Ooh, yum! <laughs> okay, so that gets rid of the ants that chomp away on the leaves. But cocoa leaves have another problem. They need water. That's where we become in. Water cocoa stems. And we transport water to a plant's leaves. The leaves use water to make sugary food for the whole tree. We deliver minerals too. We're very important. Yes, yes, you're important, but you stems need help when aphids attack you. Thank goodness for... Us, us they're delicious! Great! Problem solved! But I have a question for the stems. Where does the water you transport 
sport come from? Us! Our sea roots! We absorb water from the soil. We stick up minerals too. And that's not all. We also hold the whole cuckoo tree in place. Yeah, we're way more important than stems. Hey, wait a minute! Hey, wait a minute! Everyone has a job to do. Even a more fun guy. Hooray! 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 We get the point. What do hyphae do? When they bump into a dead plant or animal, they release chemicals that wake it down. Then they absorb the protein by the this gets the materials we need to live and grow. But how does that help the tree? Easy. You need all those. So some end up in the soil around us. So the cocoa tree roots can suck them up. <laughs> okay, but where do the monkeys come in? <laughs> <laughs> After all, they're in the title. Oh, they're in the title. oh here's the monkeys. Ooh. Cocoa trees couldn't grow without us. When a cocoa tree is about five years old, it starts to be fruit. Cocoa pods. That's us! So if you want to protect the rainforest, reuse, reuse, and recycle. That's right, now let's go eat some chocolate. This is our cast. Narrator helpers, Wiley and Faith. Cocoa Beans, Adrian, Josiah, Brody, Weston. Cocoa Pods, Isaiah, Atreyu, Aaron. Cocoa Flowers, Olivia, Isabella, and Roman. Midges, Skylar and Winnie. Cocoa leaves, Cooper and Lily. Coffin flies, Eric and Hunter. Coffin fly maggots, Leighton and Adam. Cocoa stems, Kalik and Brian. Anole lizards, Lillian and Athena. Cocoa Roots, Savannah and Dakota. Fungus, Willow, Ismail, Maxine. Monkeys, Lily and Celine. Scientists, Azaria and America. Narrators and stage help, Mr. Jackson, Mrs. Lane, Armani, and Milana. Thank you for watching our performance. We hope you enjoyed it.
is. One, you have 10 seconds to pick your crewmate. Two, a new timer will appear with an exercise for the crewmate you picked. Three, you will get 10 points for each correct crewmate and exercise you choose. Four, if you pick the imposter, you will lose all your points. Five, see how many points you can get. Good luck. Let's <laughs> go. 